Hi, my name is Ash, and this is me on 1st of September 2021 when Hurricane Ida hit northeast by a surprise. I'm sitting in my basement with two inches of water. My township has a river, and of course there is River Road, and you can see in this slide, River Road looks like a river. A lot of people in this rare event lost their cars, uh, their belongings, and incurred a lot of damage, literally thousands of dollars worth of damage to their property. Luckily for me, I just had two inches of water and maybe some wet furniture which I was able to dry out later on. My neighbors on the other hand, on each side, had about two feet of water in their basement and we all sit almost at the same elevation, slightly above the street level. I think the reason might have been that back uh, in spring, I had put a lot of gravel around the house. Um, I just did it for cosmetic reason, but not realizing that gravel acts like a natural drainage system. And as I stated before, since the house sits slightly above the street level, the water which would have gone to the foundation found its way through the gravel towards the street. Um, that is why I had less water compared to my neighbor. That's my theory, at least. This was my pump system in the basement. I have two. I had two pumps, uh, one sump pump sitting at the bottom of the pit, and the pedestal pump, which you see um, in the picture, is sitting on top of the other pump uh, on a platform. And the idea was that uh, if the water is coming in too fast, the pedestal pump will kick in and um, uh, keep up with the incoming water. But in this case, uh, as you can see, the water was coming in too, too fast. And uh, both the pumps were running and were not able to pump the water um, enough to keep the basement dry. I think one of the flaws with the system was that both the pumps were draining to the same drainage pipe. You don't see this in the in the picture, but actually both these pipes were joining above and were discharging water out on the street. So in this video, I will talk about the changes I made to this system to keep the basement dry for future flooding. First and foremost, I added another drainage pipe along with the old one. This is also a one and a half inch discharge pipe, um, as you can see in the slide. I replaced the old sump pumps with two brand new Liberty three and a quarter HP sump pumps, identical, model number 297. Three quarters of an HP is a lot of pumping water. I don't think I would be needing that under normal circumstances. And uh, I intend to run one pump at a time. So I have, I have come up with a system that I'm going to run uh, pump one on odd months and I will run pump two on even months. The idea behind keeping two symmetrical pumps is that I can replace one with the other very easily. Uh, in this case, I don't even have to do anything. I can just plug in the, the second pump and it can take over. However, if for any reason I need to replace one pump, I can easily use the old PVC pipe uh, disconnect it from the broken pump or the pump to be replaced and put in a new pump. And um, um, I intend to buy the same pump. Hopefully Liberty 297 will be around. You do want to um, ensure that the pumps are sitting on a level surface. My sump, pimp, sump pit was not exactly leveled. Um, a couple of recommendations were to use gravel and put the pumps on top of that. I decided to use a plastic grate instead um, as you can see in this slide and now both the pumps are sitting exactly at the same level. When you install these pumps you do want to make sure that you can take them out easily, you can replace them easily. Um, so for that reason I just added two to three feet of uh, PVC pipe to each one of them as you can see. Um, now to connect it with the main discharge pipe you could use two methods. You could use a rubber coupling um, I decided to use a PVC union. Um, I, I just felt that this was more uh, strong coupling than, than a, a rubber coupling, uh, which probably would last four or five years, and then you have to replace it again uh, because it may get brittle or it may develop some holes. 
Now you have some choices to connect your pumps to the actual main discharge pipe using either a flexible pipe or using, again, Schedule 40 uh, one and a half inch uh, diameter PVC pipes. Um, I would say stay away from the from the flexible pipes and use PVC pipes instead. I used to be scared of, of welding um, or gluing, uh, uh, whatever you want to call it, to join the pipes. But after watching some excellent videos, I feel very, very confident. Uh, make sure you buy the primer and the cement um, as a pair. Make sure to use the primer first. Um, if you, you can buy primer and cement separately also, but if you're not a professional plumber, probably um, a, a pair uh, of primer and cement will do fine for you. Uh, make sure when you are making a join to do, the, uh, to do a quarter turn uh, once the glue is applied so that it, makes, um, it fills in all the cracks and makes a very nice, nice and tight seal. Please do not forget to use the check valves uh, between your pumps and the discharge pipe uh, because check valves stop the water from coming back in. I landed up buying the silent check valves. Uh, supposedly the silent check valves have a spring mechanism uh, so that when the pump stops it creates less vibrations and uh, the valves which I use I got them from Amazon for $25 each. They're, they are really really quiet and they create very very um, small amount of vibration. Stress is bad. Stress is bad for humans and stress is also bad for material. Stress is bad for PVC pipes. So don't think that the PVC pipes are hard um, and they will maintain their, uh, their position however you have mounted them uh, with the adhesive and they will remain at this position. When the water flows through them with great force, these pipes have a tendency to vibrate and eventually this vibration will cause cracks and you don't want uh, to let that happen. So it's very important to secure the pipes. You can use uh, uh, different techniques to, to secure them. You can use uh, strap hangers, uh, metallic strap hangers, or you can use uh, plastic strap hangers. I have used both of them in this project. Um, I find the plastic strap hangers to be very versatile. I have used them to secure um, power cords. Um, as you can see in these slides, um, one of the one of the tips I learned uh, from the again from these YouTube videos is that when you use the plastic strap hangers, make sure you wrap the pipe around at least one loop, so that um, there is not a wiggle room for the pipe to move. Uh, I I thought that was a very very good tip. Um, one question which came to my mind was, what kind of screw should I use when I am Hang, when I'm using these strap hangers um, uh, and, and fastening them to the joist. And I found that these type of screws, um, as shown in the slide, um, they were very, very good because they have a, a large surface area and it, it holds the strap hanger in its place very securely. I decided to cover the sump pit for two reasons. Number one, uh, my office is here. I don't want the radon gas to be coming into where I'm working. Uh, and secondly, it looks nice if the, uh, if the hole is covered and, and obviously it silences the incoming water um, which is coming in through French drains. I made my own sump pit cover using half inch plywood. Um, plywood, as you know, is not a water resistant material. So I use Flexi Seal to seal the plywood so that just in case if it gets wet, um, you know, it doesn't bubble up or anything. Yes, Flexi Seal is a, is an excellent product. I actually liked it. Uh, it was the first time um, of me using it, and uh, it really works. Now, what good are pumps if the power goes out? Um, that's that's a big thing. I think battery backed pumps are are completely useless, uh, especially in an event like Ida. They would never be able to match up in performance compared to the uh, the pumps run by electricity. So for that reason, you have to have a generator backup. Uh, luckily, I do have a um, um, 12 or 1400 watt uh, generator. 
So I ran uh, two uh, 50 feet long power cords from my garage to the basement. Um, as you can see them here, they are coming in from outside. So the idea is if the electricity goes out, I can quickly start the generator and put the pumps on the generator uh, power. Now to warn me about the power outage, I, I bought these uh, power outage alarms from Amazon. And they were really inexpensive. These little devices, they go on any, um, any plug uh, which, is, uh, which has uh, power. And when the power goes out, uh, it starts beeping. I, I believe uh, it's like 90 decibels, which is really good. So um, uh, hopefully somebody will hear it and realize that the power is out and it's time to start the generators. Now to monitor that the pumps are working correctly, um, I created this contraption using a float from the old pump um, and I inserted a plastic rod and I painted uh, red and green color um, and this, uh, this contraption basically floats in the sump, sump pit and the red color shows me how much of water there is in the pit and to to watch it from upstairs let's say if i'm in my ba in my uh, bedroom um i install this blink camera um which are useless otherwise because of their lack of battery life um which shows me the status of red and green so that i i can know that the pumps are working right um if red remains on or it it rem it goes extremely high then i know that one of the pumps or the pump being used at that time is not working correctly and I can take some action. To be able to to see the red and green color of course I needed to put in a light bulb um, a very low wattage 2.5 watt LED light bulb uh, which can which, which remains lit all the time so that it can show me the colors uh, Blink camera has infrared capability of some sort, but it won't be able to show me the color properly. So it was very important to have some light uh, because the basement is, is dark at nighttime. Okay, last but not the least. There comes a time when everything fails. In spite of me taking all these precautions, it's, it's quite likely that I may get flooded again. Uh, there would be nothing I would be able to do at that time. However, I do want to be um, warned about it. So I put this little water alarm at the floor of the basement that if there is any water for whatever reason, this alarm will sound, will sound and let me know that there is water in the basement. And as I said, it doesn't help me in any way, but it's a warning system of some sort. So remember I talked about that I installed a second drainage pipe. Now for some reason the township um, changed the code and we're no longer allowed to discharge the basement or the sump pump water onto the street uh, or the st storm uh, drain. Uh, as per the code, the water needs to be discharged in the lawn. Now, to me it doesn't make any sense because if you're discharging water in the lawn, it will come right back into your basement. But anyway, to remain compliant, I, I built this system of gravel and a four inch pipe uh, to take the water as far away from the house. And I'm hoping since the house sits slightly above the street level, eventually the water from the lawn will go to the street, but at least I would be compliant. So that's all folks, I hope you found the video useful and I hope that you keep yourself and your basement dry and thank you for watching.